Coach, when you, uh, you win as many games as you do, we know that people come and they hire, they hire all your assistants away, and they become head coaches and coordinators and things all over the place. What's your process like in finding new assistants? Because you've had to keep, continue to replace that roster, and it seems like a lot of the coaches you hire obviously go on and have great success. But what is that process like trying to bring the right people in? I think one of the things that um, I learned from Bill Belichick was he, he always had – uh, an a, astonishing group of young guys that were in the building. I mean, when I was in Cleveland, we had, you know, Scott Pioli. Uh, we, we had like three or four guys that became head coaches. We had three or four other guys, Phil Savage, all became general managers. And these guys were like, go get the coffee guys. You know, when, <laughs> when they were helping me uh, as sort of my GAs. And, but when you do that, and that's what I've always tried to do is, have a bunch of young people, evaluate them, see them go get other jobs, and then know that you would hire them back because you know who they are. Now, one of the disadvantages of having all these guys going out and getting jobs everywhere is they hire the guys before I get a chance to, like Dan Lanning. Dan Lanning was here as a, as a GA. Uh, he went to Memphis or someplace, got a job. I was ready to hire him, and two days before I was going to hire him, Kirby hired him. <laughs> So, so it kind of messes up your game plan a little bit when you got all these guys out there because they kind of know who the guys that you've had in the organization are that are the good ones, and they end up snatching them up before you get a chance to. But to answer your question is I try to keep a file on, okay, here's the best coordinators, here's the best receiver coaches, here's the best, you know, DB guys. Uh, and it's hard to do because the longer you're a head coach, the more displaced you get from who are the best assistants. So you have to kind of depend on other people and ask a lot of questions and do a lot of research on who actually are these best guys. And sometimes you look at statistics and say, okay, they led the nation in defense. These guys are getting 500 yards a game on offense. Let me check this guy out. So it takes a lot of research um, to really find out because, you know, you want somebody who is knowledgeable. You want somebody who is a good communicator and a good teacher but you also want somebody that's a good fit with the people that you already have in the organization. And that's the hardest thing to figure out when you hire people you don't know. Kirby and Dan Lanning doing okay. You know, both of them doing a okay, as are a bunch of your assistants. You mentioned Bill Belichick. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, with Bill Belichick, obviously your relationship is well documented. But, you know, you go up to the press conference and, you know, you're sharing game. You're giving kind of a lecture about the importance of nothing. And Bill goes up there and he actually <laughs> just says nothing. Uh, have you thought about doing that or wanted to ever just to be able to do the Bill Belichick grunt, say no, and get off the stage? And have you also thought about having Miss Terry maybe talk to him the same way she talked to you to kind of change your whole game in the press conferences. Like Bill's done really well in his own right. So I have no, I'm in no position to be evaluating anything that he does, but I do think it's different in pro ball and in college, you know, in college, the, the image of the program and you have to recruit players to come to the program. So you have to have a program that's going to create value for them. So using the media as an opportunity to, you know, sell the kind of program you have, sell the things that you're trying to get accomplished to create value personally, academically and athletically, I think is important. So uh, for people to know who you are and know what kind of teacher you are, what kind of coach you are, how you care about players, you know, that that's really, really important. So if you took that approach in college, I think it would be not so good maybe from a public perception standpoint in terms of what you have to do to recruit and and to enhance the value of your program you could get away with it if you did uh but have you seen some of these video mashups of your top 10 press conference moments boy you oh. are electrifying you are awesome and i watched it last week and you, know, you talked about expectations right there a lot of it is about the expectations everybody else has yeah. mm -hmm. for your like those are some of your best moments in there we appreciate your transparency in there you need to know that well but you know my expectations for our team are is our team playing to their full potential and winning or losing the game is going to be a result of that and how close are you getting to that in terms of the individual player as well as the team, the chemistry, the leadership, how people are playing together. But also, you know, are they executing up to their level? Because 
look, all these guys want to play in the NFL someday. So if you can convince them that what they're doing is creating value for their future, they're going to be more motivated to do it. And it's going to benefit the team in the long run. So, you know, that that's my whole idea about, you know, you're auditioning every time you go on the field and you need to be at your best every time you go on the field. Yeah, I think you only have like 100-some guys in the NFL right now at Alabama. That's all. Yeah, that's all. I, I think it's working. <laughs> I think it's paying off. You got a resume. Yeah.